Carol is less than 24 hours from making landfall in Texas, where major impacts are expected both today and tomorrow across a large chunk of Texas and eventually going towards Louisiana and Arkansas, where flooding rainfall, storm surge, hurricane force winds, and the potential for a tornado outbreak will all be possible over the next 48 hours. So in today's forecast, we're going to break down exactly what you need to know about Barrel and why this is still a very concerning system, despite it not looking super organized early this morning. Morning. And this is what barrel looks like on the infrared imagery right now as of earlier this morning. And again, notice the area of circulation is still a bit disproportional from where the convection is currently happening. But we've at least begun to notice a trend that on the northwest side of barrel, there is a bit of a wall that's starting to form. And over the next few hours, we should start to see this trying to wrap a bit more. And that could start to lead to intensification as we go into the early afternoon hours today. Overall, there's still a lot of dry air on the south side of barrel, and there's also a lot of wind year so it still remains a bit disorganized but as this gets closer to texas we do think there is going to be a potential for rapid intensification and what that means is that this could go from either a high-end tropical storm or a low-end category one hurricane all the way up closer to a category two maybe even closer to a category three upon landfall over in texas now that's not a guarantee but that will be a possibility today as we go really late tonight so this evening is when we're watching for that possibility here's a closer view of barrel right now so again notice that convection on the west side of barrel it is still spinning pretty nicely but again does not look anything like it did before it made landfall in the yucatan peninsula and honestly unless this does rapidly intensify it probably will not look the same as it makes landfall in texas nonetheless no matter how it looks it is still going to be bringing some major impacts which is why i want to urge you to not just look at this image make sure that you are prepared today for at least category two or category three impacts across the texas coast and even inland because this is not going to be a representation of what we see when this makes landfall, at least in my opinion. Now, before we go further into this forecast, I do want to mention that we will be live here on YouTube later today for extensive barrel coverage. So make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and we'll also have multiple storm chasers out there to give you a view of what's happening in real time. Now, this is the latest from the National Hurricane Center as of earlier this morning in their advisory. Still a pretty small wind field right now when it comes to tropical storm force winds. Sustained winds were near 60 miles per hour. At the time you're watching this forecast, that could be closer to 70 miles per hour. Now, as this moves to the northwest at about 10 to 13, miles per hour it is going to start to intensify we think later today it should stay as a tropical storm throughout the morning but i do expect this to become a hurricane as we get closer to this evening across areas just to the south of texas and we will be feeling impacts basically all day today starting as early as 9 to 10 in the morning we're going to start to see the potential for tornadoes across parts of the gulf coast primarily from about houston back towards corpus christi and we'll probably activate a live stream sometime closer to lunchtime to address that threat by the time we go into the morning hours on monday this will be making landfall when it makes landfall will obviously depend on where it goes further west it goes like corpus christi it could make landfall as early as midnight tonight which would be best case scenario worst case scenario is that this goes towards houston and it makes landfall very late tonight as in like five in the morning so it could very well range and we might be alive for quite a while today and tonight so keep that in mind once we go into monday this will still be a tropical storm over texas and that will continue to bring a lot of rainfall and then eventually this weakens into a tropical the depression and then the remnants of barrel will move into areas like the ohio valley and the mississippi valley with more than likely a multi-day tornado risk coming with that beginning today and running through tuesday or wednesday now this is the latest model guidance on various computer models on where exactly barrel is going to go again most models have this making landfall between corpus christi and back near port lavaca it could still go towards houston but it is a relatively low scenario at this time and then as this moves to the north and northeast it'll more than likely track towards the Ohio Valley. That's at least what we're expecting. Um, obviously, depending on where this makes landfall, could depend on the track of where the heaviest of the rainfall will be today, tomorrow, and Tuesday. So keep that in mind. Arkansas, Northeast Texas, and even Northern Louisiana, be on alert because we could see the potential for significant flooding rains out of this. Most of the ensembles are still bringing this to a Category 1 hurricane upon landfall. There is a chance, again, it rapidly intensifies today. Even though most models are not showing rapid intensification, it is still a possibility tonight especially since it'll be in a low shear environment with very little dry air. 
Now let's go into the future and give you an idea of what you can expect today and as well as into tomorrow across parts of South Texas. Beginning with this morning, we'll be relatively dry for the most part. There might be a couple of outer bands reaching parts of the Gulf Coast, but there won't be much by around 11 to 12 o'clock today. So again, right now during the late morning into the early afternoon, some of these outer bands will be reaching areas like Galveston and back near Lake Jackson, where these storms in particular will have the potential for an isolated tornado or two. By this afternoon, those storms continue to move to the north towards Huntsville, and as well as the Woodlands, Beaumont, and Lake Charles, where the potential, again, for a round of storms that are capable of producing a couple of tornadoes will exist. And then by about 6 to 7 o'clock, we'll have another round of storms moving towards Houston. This is probably when we'll be going live for the second live stream. I think we'll have one earlier in the day as well, and we'll have another round of tornadoes being possible. And eventually, by about 11 to 12 o'clock tonight, Barrel will start to move closer to the coast. The HRRR model has us making landfall northeast of Corpus Christi and southwest of Lake Jackson, so approximately approximately near the Port Lavaca area by around 3 a.m. So again, give or take a few hours on that landfall. Um, and then eventually moving off to the north as we go into the morning, heavy bands of showers and thunderstorms will be ongoing in a relatively localized area. Again, this isn't a massive hurricane or tropical storm by any means, but it is going to be producing the potential for significant flooding as we go into Monday and even during the afternoon hours. And then we'll be watching for another band of showers and thunderstorms on the outer band that will produce even more tornadoes during the late morning Monday and into the afternoon hours, we very easily could see a tornado outbreak either, even tonight or even tomorrow. Here's what the wind gusts look like. So throughout the day today, it should be predominantly just tropical storm force winds arriving to areas along the immediate Gulf Coast as we go into the afternoon hours. But eventually by this evening, that starts to move closer to Lake Jackson. And eventually this overnight hours, we're going to start to see that core of wind ushering into areas like Lake Jackson near Victoria. Notice how Corpus Christi is only at 23 miles per hour. Don't rely on these numbers because, again, if this shifts even to just a little bit to the west, we will be talking about the potential for some significant wind threat out of barrel. And then eventually, as we go into Monday morning, this moves closer to Houston and the woodlands, where wind gusts could be as high as 70 miles per hour. Um, notice the HRRR model brings wind gusts near 90 miles per hour near College Station. And honestly, I don't think we're going to see wind gusts that high as this goes more inland, but we could still see some winds upwards of 75 miles per hour in terms of gusts. And then by the time we go into the the late afternoon and evening on Monday. Most of the wind is moving off to the north towards East Texas and Western Louisiana. It should just be mostly tropical storm force winds with some isolated power outages being possible there. So in terms of total rainfall accumulation, well, again, this is the HRRR model. It sometimes does overestimate uh, rainfall accumulation totals, but notice the bulk of where this rain will be falling is going to be near the eye. It's not going to be really super spread out here. So areas like Austin and San Antonio might not see anything unless barrel does shift more to the the west today, which if it does, this will be shifting as well to the west. But if it goes further east, it also could shift further to the east towards areas like Houston. So keep that in mind. There's a big spread here, but the general gist here is that the potential for four to eight inches of widespread rain is likely. And then we could even see some isolated locations picking up over a foot of rainfall both today and tomorrow. So combine the two days together, and that's what we're looking at in terms of total rainfall accumulation. And here's again another look at the uh, future radar for today. So again, one round of storms coming in around one time. These will produce the potential for a couple of tornadoes. Better chance for tornadoes late this evening out of some of these bands going towards Beaumont and Houston. And eventually overnight tonight, we could even see a few more. But I think the better chance for more tornadoes will be Monday around and just after lunchtime, which will probably also be live for that. Last thing I want to mention is that the GFS model does have the jet stream dipping very far down to the south. So it is likely that Barrel will get attracted to this and it should be able to race to the north and east. And with that said, that would basically mean that the rainfall accumulation down in like northeast Texas and western Arkansas should still be significant but it won't be as significant as it could be because this will probably speed up and move to the northeast towards the Ohio Valley so just wanted to kind of mention that for you if you're further off to the north and east again really anything beyond Monday still remains a bit uncertain we'll talk more about the possibilities though in today's live stream so make sure that you are subscribed to the channel